Alright. Hopefully this time I've got the space to make this video. I was five minutes in last time. Five minutes! <laughs> Alright. So, uh, humor. And then, this is the first tutorial that I'm making. So, let me know if it's shit. Or if it's good. Um, it's the first one of a couple I'm going to do that have been asked. Um, any songs that I've posted covers of on YouTube? If you've got any other songs that you want uh, tutorialized, hit me up. I do most of my shit by ear, so pretty much anything is on the cards. If I can't do it, I can't do it. But if I can do it, I can do it. And I will try and do it. How long it'll take me to do, on the other hand, is a different question. But... You know. I tried to offer that as a service, as a paid service. But no one really bought into it. And like the one person who did, I never even really did the video for them anyway. So I probably didn't deserve to get paid for it. <laughs> so now I'm just going to do it for free. <laughs> um, so this is the first one. It's Mischief Brew, Two Nickels. Um, it's the first track on their last album. This is not Children. It's a really good album. It's a really good opening track. Very straightforward. Down the middle. Offbeat. Energetic rock song. Look good. <laughs> ah. Good lyrical theme. Lyrical theme. It's not really a message. I don't know. It's talking about families fucking freezing to death or setting their apartments on fires setting their apartments on fire using the ovens for warmth and shit like that and then heating is too it's expensive because the cost of living is far too steep anyway the part that you want is the part where it's how to play it <laughs> that's the point of the tutorial isn't it so the song's in C and there are two things going on. There's, I think it's, I think it's two guitar, two different guitar tracks. I might be wrong, actually. I might be wrong. It's, not, it's an electric guitar, though. It's always easier to do shit on an electric guitar. But this is pretty straightforward. Kind of more straightforward than it sounds. Um, so the first thing you got is a C, C chord. The first thing you got is a chord progression. C. A minor. Um, kind of G. It's kind of a GF thing. I'll get to that. And the second thing is the uh, lead line melody, which is just four notes that keep repeating. And it's a C on the B string, a D on the third fret, open high E string, and a G. Third fret on the high. And then, so I'll play through it at regular time and play through everything in the intro right up to the vocals. First things first is that first half. It's really just two different guitar parts that play through twice each. 
Um, so to get that melody line I just went through before and the chords being played at the same time is fairly straightforward. All the notes are within reach of all the chords as they usually are with um, standard kind of folky diatonic chord progressions. That's why riffing and playing chords is a lot easier than people realise. It kind of just seems like it'd be a weird territory to go into. But usually, just the way that scales work on a guitar in any like chord shape, any given chord shape, you've got heaps of notes in reach that are in that scale. Which means that if you're playing a G chord, you need to fucking start wandering the riff around. Just like hit most of the frets that you can reach with your fingers naturally, and they're probably in the right scale. <laughs> point at hand. So you can reach all the notes right through that chord progression. So you're going to do it. Go through C first. And like that whole intro, for most of it, is played really quietly. It's really softly. Softer than I really played it that time just before. And you're really lightly brushing the strings. Pretty much just from the D string up. You don't really fuck with the lower two strings till later. Um, till like halfway through that second playthrough. So, and like rhythm's really tight and repetitive, it's just that down, 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 up, up, down, up. And you kind of want to make sure, to get it sounding really nice and bright and crisp, you want to kind of be making sure that you're striking where you want to with the pick. You know, kind of leave out that high E until you need it in the riff. Like, see how every up I'm playing is just from the B up, the B down. It helps to mute the high E with your, the flesh of your first finger down here. If you've got it kind of resting on the E, you can't really touch it, and then you can just free it up when you need it. That kind of shit. Yeah. Which is a lot easier to do if you rest your fretboard kind of like on the ball of your hand there. It's a lot, it gives you that bounce action. Very quick muting and unmuting. If that kind of works for your fingers. Next chord's the F, and since we're only using the from the D string up, that's all you need. Just the same as the C chord. Bring those two frets, two fingers down. Making sure you got that down. So again, that lead line is C, first fret on the B string, third, open E, third fret, C, D, E, G. bit. If you play your G like a C, if you got what I mean, like same as bringing the F up there, you just bring that, those two fingers up the string instead, or down the string, how you... <laughs> and have that pinky on the third fret of the B string. Try not to strike the high E again. You've got that kind of resting that way, not that way. And then it works a lot better to try and slide the whole chord, but only strike the B string. But you're quickly sliding two frets up to the fifth fret on the B string. 
Just a really quick. It sound it sounds back when it's played fast, but it's just just break from the strumming pattern for a sec. <laughs> I don't know why I'm not just verbally explaining this to you, but you just slide up, quickly strike that fifth fret, then come back down and hit the third fret again. And you're just right back in sync again. And that's a full F, the way I usually play bar chords. Rather than fucking around with that, I'm like, what the fuck is that? It's clunky. You can't do shit in terms of riffing with it. You play a bar chord like a C, but you're whacking that pinky under the, uh, on the string under the first finger. No, third finger, sorry. And then using the thumb to cover the first fret on the low E. It's the exact same notes as bar chord. Much more convenient. Some people don't like it. Some people find it really... Oh, I hate this reverse image. Some people um, find it well more inconvenient doing it that way. So, you know, whatever place you go. But in this instance, I think it's a lot easier to play an F this way. So it might be something that's worth getting to know if you're playing Mischief Brew. Pat the Bunny does it as well. Um, Eric definitely makes heaps of use out of that, and it's just so much easier to do if you make it, like, a habit. Anyway, so yeah. I'm still upstroking to get that fifth fret in, by the way. Up, down. to that G that's played like a C, but instead don't have the, it's an open B string. And you walk up on the B string. Open, one, three. Keep that chord shape, use your pinky and first finger. Open, one, three, one, oh. And then we start all over again. But this time we start getting louder, start including the lower strings. And then we go on to the second part, which is starting to see G, which you only need these two lower strings, so you, it's a lot easier to just play it like that again. Just move the C up. And then you've got a little kind of melody that's in the bass notes there where it's like. So the easiest way to try and make that shine through is just to play a really kind of like hard and rough C, which is then two down strokes real quick. Just play the open strings. And so that open A can come through. Or try and like play Actually, yeah, I think the better way is rather than keep the G pressed down, whatever you prefer, but just lift that, just try and get that open A string in there on those middle two. And F, A minor, F, A minor, G. 
that easy. It's kind of like a down, down real quick, muted strings before going back into it, just gives it that effect. And so put it all together and once again it sounds like this. Pretty much just doing the keys doing that over and over for the verse. Real morning on the bus, I'm turning down the bottom up. Can you say the dollar spins that you make and get to bed? Oil and kerosene, so we'll throw a little heat. Snow bird paint in the hole, scrape the last of floor and boards. And then from there, it starts with an A, A minor G and it descends to the F. Um. And everybody on the block is talking about the weather, not the Um, yeah, so, yeah. It's talking about the weather, not the C. Whoa. Just doing that G, A, G thing again. Whoa. And then. This bit, doing a C and just a classic walk down. Then that middle finger on the second fret, keeping the rest of the C chord intact, or no, just that C note intact, really. Not really hitting the high E. You can if you want, I guess. Um, but will we crack when the A minor G? Notice how I'm playing the G. I'm always playing with C kind of G for this song. It's a lot easier. Pretty much the whole song subsists off having that C shape to give it that vibe. Um, will, we, will we crack when the house all go <laughs> I fucking. <laughs> uh, I contradict myself right there. Fuck my muscles. Alright. Whatever you do, that. In that kind of, it's hitting it for like one strum, it doesn't really matter. Will we crack when the house will go black and the radiators knock no more? Uh, yeah, I think that's what it does there. Will we crack when the house will go black and the radiators knock no more? Yeah, I think in my cover I might have done this differently, but I'm pretty sure in the song it's... G, F, A minor, F, G, C. That's C. C with B on top. A minor, G, F. A minor, F, G, C. Will we crack when the house all go black? And the radiate is not no more. G. <laughs> and then you do it again. But. This time it's drawn out. Said And now, for this bit, if you, want, if you chuck your pinky on the high G. For this one walk down, I think it sounds a lot more accurate. Will we, will we crash when the house is? Then you can take it away there. House is all go black. And the rain, a minor, C G 
F Radiate S G Knock no more And then we're back into the second half of the intro and what all the verses have been. Story on the screen, everybody in the street. Now they're really morning blades, they got out but not okay. Spread out on the kitchen floor, just trying to keep warm. Male landlord selling out a bundle up and turn it down. Wow. And everybody on the block is talking about the wet not the poor. The little we crack when the household are black and the radiators not burn. I said, Bill, we crash when the house is all dark black. And the radiator is not no more. And there's only one playthrough there, and then we go into the outro, which is simpler than any of the rest. That's straight up chords. Palm muting. We change the rhythm up a bit. It becomes kind of just a two, four, like one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. We're on C. One way or another. F, same chord progression. We're going south, A minor, for the winter. F, A minor, G. One way or another. We're going south for the winter. One way! Same thing, but just played loud now. We're going south for the winter. One day or another. We're going south, south, south for the winter, the winter. Hold the, hold the F. Hey, my G. So let's go, let's go, let's go. And it's just the same old, like, right back into the verse kind of thing again. Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go, and then we're back to the very start of the intro again. Let's go, so yeah, that's it. Uh, let me know if you have any questions, if anything needs clearing up. Like I said, this is my first ever tutorial. I don't know how easy to follow or not that was. Um, and I'll get to work on for an old Kentucky Anarchist pretty much straight away. Yeah. And yeah, sorry, I play with my hair heaps. It's really annoying. I don't know why I'm so tempted to use a video. Um webcam tutorial kind of thing as a therapist right now.